our next presentation is by Bernie Tidman of Bangor University, talking to an automated system for species, size, and sex data collection of crustaceans. Hi, my name is Natalie Holder. I work at Bangor University and I'm a fisheries scientist. Um, we have a collaborative team across a variety of um, universities and also throughout the fishing industry. And we have been working on a variety of projects, the first of which I'd like to introduce you today is our video capture of crustacean data. So this video unit is based on the Raspberry Pi single board computer with an additional board for GPS, GSM connectivity and an uninterruptible power supply. So this is mounted onto fishing vessels where we collect data and collect video as it comes on board of the fishermen unloading their catch. Um, and then the end point of this will be that this video is processed on board before the data on catch size and sex of crabs and lobsters is returned um, to shore via um, GSM or other data transfer methods. So the first step is the extraction of frames from the video. So the camera has a motion triggered capture of 10 second clips. Um, with a circular buffer um, to allow capture of frames before the motion trigger. Um, and then there is background subtraction to allow uh, future processing, uh, as shown here. So these are the types of um, pictures we're getting. And the first stage of the AI is to um, uh, identify whether it's a crab or a lobster or something else that's in the frame. And Aberystwyth University have been leading on this aspect. And they have been experimenting with deep learning frameworks um, and to get a tight bounding box and label on each animal. And you can see these are the types of images we're getting from a variety of boats. Um, so Aberystwyth have um, had preliminary testing and they found that for the lower power hardware that we're using, the dark neck tiny looks like a good candidate with good precision across both crab and lobster species identification. The next step that they've been working on um, is to create measurements for both crab and lobster. And these are uh, feature point based measurements. And these have been developed for the animals, both crabs and lobsters from a small training set and have so far been tested on other images as we were unable to get out and about and get as much video as we would like due to COVID-19. And so they are waiting on more training and testing data of crabs and lobsters from our team at Bangor. Um, so the idea with this is then to combine this video data with other data such as landings, VMS or other spatial data and environmental sensor data. In the short to medium term, we're looking to use that to get size-based indicators and data deficient stock assessment methods. But with a long time series, we're looking for a data rich stock assessment. Two other projects that are just starting, um, uh, Mike Kaiser from our collaboration at Harriet Watt. He is the lead on a PhD, which we've just recruited into to start in September. And this will be using um, two approaches, both uh, high definition video and laser 3D scanning to collect and process data on bycatch of fisheries. Um, then the second one is um, being led by Claire Shostek at Bangor University. And this is to use um, video, underwater video data to estimate scallop densities and create size measurements um, as an alternative to dredge based scallop surveys. Um, a recent paper by a team in um, Scotland has shown scallop bucket identification has worked quite well. Um, and Claire is looking to take this further with a stereo video to allow size measurements. So that's just a really brief overview of, of us. And I'm really interested to see what other people are doing and how we can maybe collaborate and take all of this work forwards. I'll just leave you with a video of the bycatch video that um, we're hoping our PhD student will allow. As you can see, there's quite a lot of movement in the video. This is because it's been shaken to go through a riddle. Um, and has its own challenges, but um, we have a, a student starting on this in September. Thank you very much. And I look forward to um, speaking to everybody soon. Well, thank you very much, uh, Bernie, for coming. And thank you, Natalie, for the video. Um, automatically capturing the kind of information you're after. It's interesting to me that you, you've got challenges of pots. You've got challenges of 
shaking units and yet you've gone with quite a s simplified pared down um, processing unit. Can you give us some story about how you managed to get to that solution and some of the challenges you've had dealing with things getting in the way, pots and such like, or shaking images, or just some, some of the stories about your journey and, and how you've collaborated with others. Thank you. Yeah, sure. I'm, um, I'm working uh, on the um, on the first project that Natalie talked about with the, the crabs and lobsters. And um, it's still a, a work in progress and I'm anticipating all the kinds of problems that we've been hearing about from uh, the other speakers. So um, we're, we're starting to deploy some of these camera units on fishing boats and I'm sure we'll have lots of issues with um, water on cameras. Um, we're uh, placing the, the cameras is, is always uh, interesting and in making sure you get a decent view of the, uh, of the, of the animal. So uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna hit a lot of these problems I'm sure. And it's interesting to hear some of the, uh, the solutions that others have, have come up with. Um, the, the, we, one thing we haven't heard much about is we've had a lot of constraints on both the kind of cost and also on the, the working practices of the, of the fishers. So uh, simple things like, um, um, and I don't know what other people have done who, who are here today in terms of, but we've seen a lot of tracking of, of animals, you know, the, the detection working per frame, um, but we want to be able to count the animals. So we don't want to have, you know, if the, if the, if the, the tracking or the detection kind of fails on a few frames and then starts again, you want to make sure you are not counting the same animal more than once. Um, uh, so, so we've gone for a, for a simple system where we're sort of saying, well, there's some movement in front of the camera and uh, we're going to just pick a frame uh, that we think there's something interesting in and apply the, 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 the deep learning. So we've gone to sort of cheaper, cheaper methods for um, trying to find you know, a sequence of an animal, separate that out and then pick a frame and start doing some more analysis on it, like the, the measurements and so on. Um, so yeah, I've been interested to know how other people are, are finding individual frames. I, I've seen that we, we've seen today things like conveyor belts and that wasn't an option apparently. Um, and, and making sure that things like, I, I was quite keen on just having a big red button that the, the fishes could hit when they, there's an animal underneath, you know? So we can just say, right, take a picture now, but no, they, that, that was too far away from the, the working practices. We had to work with the fishers to make sure they actually didn't feel it was um, taking them excess time and distracting them from doing their job. So, so there's those kind of constraints were, were interesting to work with and we'll have to see whether the sort of solutions we've come up with are gonna actually, um, you know, work in the in the in the field so to speak so we're, we're just getting to that stage now sorry you're, you're on silent i think you're muted it's a fascinating blend of of use case need and and we're hearing throughout the presentations about trying to separate this as being a requirement of the crew that's something that will operate by itself matt matt have you got any inputs yeah i, I just think the yeah the, the funding <laughs> aspect is is uh, something that you know, we should maybe think about networking with it as an output from the forum, um, but also the the consideration for stakeholders as well. I mean, a, a, a traditional uh, fish survey is incredibly invasive if you compare it to what we're trying to um, to, to to do instead. If, if you stand there and get your tape measure out, and, you know, uh, go about your business. Uh, so yeah, maybe there are some incentives to. To say it's it's just going to take a second and uh, we'll have everything. Uh, so yeah, I think those uh, workshopping real world scenarios that, that are empathetic with stakeholders is super important, um, as important as the tech really. Yeah. Okay, well thank you very much, Bernie, for stepping in at the last minute to to cope with Natalie's uh, not being able to present. Um, great to hear from your team.